Welcome back to part three. This is all about how we used specific lights and specific lighting techniques to create special effects. So I think the first thing we should talk about is TV flicker. Okay, so I'm sure you're all well aware what it's like to be sitting in a dark room watching television. There's a very distinct light that comes from the TV. It's, uh, it's a very eerie light and uh, we really wanted to try and use that to add to the suspense and the drama. There's not enough light from an actual television to light a scene. So the challenge was how to recreate this light. The first thing we tried was we scrunched up a ball of tin foil and then opened it up again into like a bowl shape so we could shoot the light into it and then reflect it back out. And that wasn't really working because it, it, no. it was looking like light bouncing off a metal surface well, rather than... it would probably be more suitable for water reflections yeah. or something. So that's a good tip to remember if you're... Yeah, right. yeah. But the next idea that we had did work and it worked really well. And it was kind of a quick fix thing. But um, I headed off and I grabbed some drumsticks. Neither of us can play the drums. So no, no, we can't. We actually have two <laughs> set of drumsticks and I don't know where they come from or why we have them. Because neither of us can play the drums. No, not at all. Um, so we tried this technique of just flicking up and down like you can see here with the drumsticks in front of the light and we quickly realised that this was going to work really well and uh, it's the technique we use for the rest of the shoot. Oh my god, it's a miracle! Hallelujah! <laughs> you know, we're, we've, we're keeping it and we're going to use it again in the future. I can't believe how well it turned out to be honest, but that's the way it goes isn't it? It's anyway, all, it's all an illusion. So the next thing to talk about is the big abduction light that's coming through the main window in the room. Uh, and how did we do this? Well, we used what's known as a blonde, which is a 2000 watt tungsten light. The name blonde is kind of like a nickname. There's lots of nicknames for lights in filmmaking, so you can get blondes and redheads. The average house light bulb is about 60 watts. The dados are between 100 and 150 watts. So the blonde at 2000 watts or 2 kilowatts is significantly brighter. And the reason why we wanted something that size was not only did we want this really strong beam to come through the window as you know as you can imagine a UFO abduction beam might be but we also wanted something that would significantly overpower the dado lights when it's turned on so you get that impression that it's like burning out all the night seeping into every corner and just blinding the people in the room nice we actually needed the light to be outside for some of the filming here because we wanted it through the window for some of the awesome shots that we've got here um, so our problem was that the weather wasn't particularly good on this night of all nights it was raining so when the rain just got to an acceptable level of drizzle we decided to risk it and we headed out with as many umbrellas as we owned and we had a couple of people standing outside over the over the lights and these lights just for note do not like water at all okay so really like like do this kind of thing you're moving forwards, you, it's pushing you back, it's almost like wind, okay? Yeah. It's like a turbine. Do you want me to stay on the angle or is this side? So is this side um, the whole thing? Mike? No, go with this side. Go with this That's side. That's it, just so it's more interesting. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> there he is, our trusty friend, Mark. He's uh, the actor who's been in a couple of our projects, The Price of Freedom being one of them. He's a top man. I'm sure any time we phone him up, he has to start. Small going. heart attack when he checks his phone and he <laughs> sees our name on it. Oh, God. If he's not sitting in a freezing cold puddle in the middle of a wood filming a war trench scene for The Price of Freedom, he's been blinded by a two kilowatt <laughs> light shining right in his eyes. Yeah, I think his eyes were water. I don't. We turned the light off and afterwards he just couldn't see anything. It was just like bl blank. But um, that's commitment for you, you know. There's a true craftsman that's right there. That's a professional. There. Yeah, that's total pro. The only thing, you know, we can think of is how hilarious it must have looked from outside. Oh because the, the people outside with their umbrellas must have been cracking up because he must have looked like a moth stuck inside a window <laughs> you know, trying to get outside. But he was brilliant. And uh, it was a pleasure to work with him yet again. So there he is, Mark. What a legend. So for the strobe effect that we wanted, um, we actually went out and bought a strobe light. Uh, disco, disco, yeah, disco, man, disco. totally. <laughs> we had mini rave in that in that room, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, but we quickly became aware that the DSLR doesn't like strobing. Epic fail. Epic. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it doesn't like strobing at all um, because of this rolling shutter thing that a lot of digital cameras have. And as you can see from this footage, like you're getting this half and half, which just looks awful. Action. John! Very good. <laughs> Try one more of those without leaning. 
we decided that this would be one of the things we would try to do in post on the edit machine. So we kind of scrapped the strobe light and just went for it with the blonde on full blast and knew that we'd, we could create that later. And in fact, in the final part, part five, uh, I'm actually going to talk more about how we created that strobing shutter um, yeah, effect. So oh. that tune in for that one. No, I, look if forward, I look forward to that. <laughs> final thing to talk about is smoke. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. What was the smoke machine for? Well, simply, it uh, makes the lighting look a lot better. This is like a really thin haze of smoke. So you want to blast your smoke machine a bit and then dissipate it in the room. Um, and that's the key. You don't want it to look like something's on fire in the corner <laughs> of the room. <laughs> Someone left the oven on or something. Um, so it, it kind of just gives the light like a medium, really, to show up in. It's like... Exactly. Yeah, yeah I like the way that's put. Well, that's pretty good. I think that makes sense. Medium. Getting, um, a bit... getting a bit fancy. But yeah, uh, and it looks pretty damn cool. If you've seen anything like Close Encounters or anything like that. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Get the smoke in there. It hides the corners. It hides the naff bits of your set or whatever. And it will just make your lighting look ten times better. So I think that's it, isn't it, for effects lighting? Yeah, pretty much. What's next? What's next? Well, we're going out into the woods. If you Ooh. come out to the woods today, you're sure for a big surprise. <laughs> because it's part four of the making of series. I'm getting excited again. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Chill out. Calm down. Make sure you come back for part four to see how we did all the filming in the woods. Because, again, we were up against it. And car headlights will play a big part oh, in yeah. this one. There's a vacuum cleaner in the background. What the right. hell is going on now? We're trying to film here. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's We've gone. done that. Have we? Yeah. Um, no. Bye. Is there anything else? That's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to say... No, no, no. That's not a good sign-off.